Now that we have our piecewise function graphed, let's do a little bit of analysis of this graph. So let's take a look at what the domain of our graph is, what the range of our graph is, uh, find any intercepts that the graph has, and this new concept of continuity. We want to know, is our graph F continuous on its domain? So if we're looking at the domain of our graph, remember that the domain just represents all possible X values that we can input into our graph. Um, and so this kind of is going to help us with our domain up here. So this is telling us that if x is less than negative 2, we use this. So if you think about all of the values that are less than negative 2, are there any restriction on any of those numbers less than negative 2 that can get plugged in here? Well, no, there aren't. So there's no restrictions there. Um, and if x is greater than or equal to negative 2, we use this. So if x is equal to negative 2, that works, right? We use that to figure out some of the values for our graph initially. And then are there any restrictions on any values to the right of negative 2 on the number line that can't be plugged in to this? Well, there are no real numbers that we are not allowed to put in here. So there are no restrictions on this interval either. And that's actually reflected in the graph, right? You can see that every point on the number line, if we pick any x value on the number line, we can move down and there will be some corresponding y value on this graph. There aren't any holes or any gaps in our uh, function. So this has a domain of all real numbers. So the domain is from negative infinity to infinity, all real numbers. So now we want to find any intercepts. So are there any x-intercepts, y-intercepts, and so on? So we can actually see two x-intercepts. There's one x-intercept on this left half, right? We can see an x-intercept here. And then there's an x-intercept on this right half from this equation. And we also have a y-intercept here. So to figure out our x and y-intercepts, we can uh, plug in the proper values into our respective equations to do those calculations. So we know that we get one x-intercept from the equation y equals x plus 3. We can see that that part of the graph is going to intersect the x-axis once. So remember, to get an x-intercept, we make the y value 0. So when y is 0, we have 0 equals x plus 3, subtract 3, and we get that x equals negative 3. And you can see that point there on the graph, negative 3, 0. So that's our first x-intercept, negative 3, 0. Um, now we're also going to get an x-intercept from the right half of our graph, from the equation y equals negative 2x minus 3. And that's going to occur right here, right? So right here on our graph. Now that one isn't as easy to tell what it is because it's kind of in between negative 1 and negative 2. So we probably need to plug it in uh, to our equation to solve. So remember, an x-intercept is when our y value is 0. So let's plug 0 in for y and solve this. So we have 0 equals negative 2x minus 3. So add 3 to both sides, we get that 3 equals negative 2x. Divide by negative 2, and we get negative 3 halves is equal to x. So our other x-intercept is going to be at negative 3 halves, comma, 0. So that's our second x-intercept. And then we can find the y-intercept by looking at our equation here. Now, if you recall, this is in slope-intercept form. And the y-intercept occurs on this part of our graph. And we know that this value just represents our y-intercept. So our y-intercept is 0, negative 3. So those are the intercepts for this graph. What is the range of this graph? So remember, the range is represented by all possible y-values for our function. So we have to consider what is the highest and the lowest value that our graph ever reaches. 
So if we look up here, right, if we kind of draw a horizontal line and we take this and we're, we can move it around to kind of see where our graph is first going to hit, there's nothing, there's no graph in green at these values up here. So the first place that we actually hit a value of green is right here at positive one. And then as we move down, we can see that our graph is going down forever. So we will come into contact with a green part of our graph forever as we move down to negative infinity. So our graph is start, our range is starting here at negative or at well, positive one, sorry, and moving down in this direction. Um, now at positive one is the point defined when y is positive one. Well, we can see that it's a closed circle here, so it is defined. And so we will use a bracket, right? We use a bracket for that. And it's gonna go all the way down to negative infinity. So our range starts down here at negative infinity, works its way up to positive one. So our range is from parentheses negative infinity up to positive one. Again, we said because this point is included, we use a bracket. Now the last part is a new concept that um, I wanna go over with you and it's called continuity or it asks, is our graph continuous on its domain? So our domain is all real numbers, but basically what continuous means is are we able to draw this entire graph without ever picking up a pen our pencil? So could I s draw these entire graph, this entire graph without picking up my pencil? Meaning I don't have to draw it, get to the end point of the first interval, have it skip, and then continue to draw my other graph. So you can see that we could just take our pencil and draw along this entire graph to draw the whole thing if we so desired, right? So we could draw this entire graph without ever picking up our pencil. So we would say that this is continuous. So this function is continuous.